sure this is long awaited for a lot of people, me included, honestly, have not been to this place in a very long time. I bet you it's been a year, at least. And everybody loves these videos. I don't even know if they're open anymore. Their website's down, their phone lines are down, their Facebook has not been updated since sometime in 2013. But Google still says that Johnny's U Pull It is open, okay? And it says it's open today until 4 o'clock. I need parts for that cruise. Johnny's is the ideal place for parts for that cruise because, although I did get a bunch of new parts, um, seat parts for that. The presence sensor, uh, I can't even connect to the module. I did get it to connect one time. I, I moved the seat, so I don't know if the harness is bad under the seat or if there's something else going on because I can't get it to read anymore. The module itself on eBay, a used one, it's like 65 bucks. A whole complete seat at Johnny's is 35 bucks. So if I can find an all black seat there, I'm just gonna buy it. I'm gonna cut the harness behind the plug because I don't know if there's a problem in the connection or the whole wiring or, or anything. But I'm just gonna take a whole seat because that is gonna be the easiest thing to do. Two bolts in those seats, uh, they slip into a track in the front, two bolts in the back. Uh, and then I'm gonna cut the wiring harness and it's out, okay? So that's my main purpose, but I also wanna look around. So this is gonna be the domestic yard that I'm going to look at. I don't know if I'll get into the import yard. Uh, you gotta go through a different process to get there. It's nothing, you gotta give them your car keys and stuff because they had people that was stealing stuff. You get a ticket and then once you come back with your parts and you get them your ticket and they give you your car keys back. Uh, but like I said, I don't even know if this place exists anymore. So I'm just as curious as you guys. Plus, I'm sure a lot of you want to know if it's open. Because I know a lot of you that watch this, like a, a good bit of you, actually used to go there. And now it just it sucks because you used to be able to get online and see at least what their inventory is. That's not guaranteeing you there's a part there, but you at least could see if they had that vehicle there so there's a chance. Now you're just basically gambling. So if you're not local to the area, it's like, like it's an hour drive for me. But there are other yards in that area and then like Tyrone Auto Salvage is in that vicinity. Uh, they have like 15 cruises with seats in them and their seats are 50 bucks. And I thought about just ordering one and then picking it up, but I wouldn't get the whole harness plug like I'm gonna do here and it wouldn't be much of a video and I know a lot of you want to get want me to go to Johnny so I did bring the drone whether they let me fly it or not since it's been so long and I don't know who's even working there if the guy that the like the main dude if he's there I know he'll let me fly my drone but all right So, sad news, as you can see, there's not much here. And he told me, he said, I said, I haven't been here in forever. And he said, well, you missed a lot because this place is closing. So the rumors are true. He said, there's no set date. They're thinking next month, but yeah. So this will be my last trip here. And I do see a cruise in the distance. So I guess we'll go down here see if there's anything in that one but yeah maybe we will see the import yard but it's gonna be worthless really because we don't have any more pool at yards here this is gonna be the last one so it sucks it really sucks <laughs>
this seat's not even worth it. It's so ragged up from everybody. Oh, that sucks. Well, let's move some stuff back here and move it forward and see what the harness looks like anyways. I'm so sad about this place right now. Oh, this was even a stick shift. Man, that, that's sucky. That's another reason why I don't want it. That, the tracks are all rusted. I got a freaking a good bumper in here. This would have been this would have been the parts I needed too. Seat tracks are frozen solid from rust and other things. So there's the plug. Yeah, I don't I'm not taking this one. That sucks. Um I'm just gonna look at uh other yards obviously. Well let's look make sure there isn't any more here but i don't think there is looks like they do have some newer inventory here and looks like they combined the import and what's down there i don't think keep out okay that's what i thought looks like they combined the import yard with the domestic because this is some of the imports here <sighs> let's go let's go look around the trucks let's see what's down there So my buddy has a 92 Silverado, and he's looking for a drive shaft. Has, he put a 5.3 in it. It's a 92, so it'd be around this style, but not with the square headlights, the dual headlights. Um, he has a 5.3 in it, and he just is throwing a manual transmission out of it, out of a V6, which would be this one. So he needs a drive shaft, and <laughs> there's one one underneath here but his is a short box this is a long bed so I don't know if he'd be able to shorten it but just send him pictures of that it just sucks his place is closing I had a lot of good times out here oh, I, I'm looking around I'm not really finding anything there's no C10s um, lots of old Silverados and up to I guess Oh, um, 14. Is, I think that's when they change them. 2014. There's a there's a mouse. I just seen a mouse. Right there. He just crawled underneath there. Yep. Uh, there's lots of engines. A lot of people look like they're taking the intakes off of these. There's a lot of intakes missing. Not this one, but all the like five threes, six O's. The intakes are missing. So it wouldn't be that one, or the engines are missing. This one's also a manual transmission, um, but it's also a long bed. So that and the drive shaft on this one's steel, and it's about rusted apart. Oh, this sucks to see.
well, here we are. I'm leaving. More people did show up. There's, you know, there's some people looking around, but there's really not. There's not a lot left. It's supercharged 3.8. Yeah, that, that would be great for somebody. That, and then there's the turbocharged SS, HHRSS motor. That's, they're hard to find. Uh, now, it doesn't say if it's a good engine or not, which you don't know. So it's like, it's a gamble. If somebody was into building engines, that'd be a good one to grab, but it's made it to an automatic transmission too. It just sucks. Like, I really did enjoy going to that place a lot, but that's that's gonna be our last trip there. Clark's is still open. They still let me pull my parts. Well, I say they're still open, they're not open today. So that'll have to be a, a next week trip. Um, but I wanted to see Tyrone Auto Salvage. I'm gonna drive by there. I don't know if they're open today. Uh, I try looking it up online, but I have hardly any signal while I'm there, Johnny. So, um, yeah, let's let's see what I can do. There are a couple more yards that let you pull your parts, and I haven't been to those places in years. In fact, the last time I was there was when I did the Jeep Liberty build. If you guys remember that, holy crap, was that a long time ago? They're the a different direction from where I'm at right now, and about 45 minutes away from my house but there's two of them so i've only ever been to the one rossman's and uh rossman's and parsons they're they're right right by each other and i think they both let you pull your own parts so i might have to make a trip down yonder to go there to check it out but yeah it's a sad day when i'm wrecked now you guys already know this but i'm so indecisive that I am uh, part of the way home now, and I am gonna turn around and go back to Johnny's and get that seat. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, why did I not just get that seat? Because it has every part in it that I need to fix my seat. Like, I really just hit myself right there. That was real. Seriously, I'm probably 15 miles away already. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to go back and grab that seat. It'll be quick. But, you know, I guess they're open until 4. I got I got time. It's not going to take me long to grab that seat. Okay. What actually changed my mind is there's no other place open today. It's Saturday. And I really don't want to wait until next weekend to go get a seat. So that's kind of like where I'm at. I'm like, I want to... I kind of want to fix that this weekend. And another reason why I want to fix that so fast is I have somebody that wants that already. So, quick flip, like that a lot. There's a big car show going on here in Altoona. And there's all kinds of, like, really nice cars. And I'm driving my Murano. So, I mean, maybe I should just enter it. Moral of the story, don't be a dumb dumb kid. Use your head the first time. 23, 23.85. I thought their seats were 35 feet. They're getting a receipt. Gotta go catch it now. It's running for me. Get out away from me. I caught it. All right, so first things first. Before I even get into that seat, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Then we're just gonna plug that seat in, okay? I'm gonna get it in there, cause that harness is long enough, I think I can just plug it in. And then, we're gonna hook the battery back up and make sure that fixes our code. Cause if it doesn't, then we got different problems. I don't get this thing out too often. Look at this. I love this kit. Somebody bought this for me. 
yeah. All right. So the battery is a ten. It's my junkyard tool pack. Disconnect the negative. Gone. So now, real quick, come over here. This harness clips in down under the seat down there on, under the floor. See, I have it pulled up out. It just, right here, push this in and then that comes out and then this unclips like that. So then this, pull this plug like that, just connect it. Now, see how long this is? I'm going to try to finesse this up in there. I don't want to use this seat. I'm going to be honest with you, but... I think we might just need the harness or we might just need the module. So we're going to start off by just plugging it in. If it goes away, then we're going to start by just swapping the harness out. If that, that doesn't fix it, then we'll swap the module over. If that doesn't fix it, then we're going to need the seat sensor. And I think that's this one right here. And I'm going to have to get it out of there, the sensing sensors whatever but the cushion's gonna have to come apart but yeah i, I really don't want to have to use this seat It went away and then it came back. Well, now it's hooked up to that new module, so. It might just need some programming. Hold on a minute. What should be like a fuse or something, something simple. Oh, interesting. We still have communication problems. You watch, you, you watch. I bet you this is a fuse and I just went, I mean, I paid 23 bucks for it, but still, the fact that I didn't check fuses first, but I did have a connection to it at one point, so it makes no sense to me. Let me plug in the original seat and then start looking through the fuses and make sure that I don't have something going on there. All right, so I have all the original stuff plugged in right now to this seat. Since we're not, I can't connect to the module. It's not connecting to the module and getting no signal. So I cannot read the low speeds, uh, the serial data, the LAN data. I don't know how, you, I, I think you have to have some sort of special tools and stuff to, to even read those signals. I can't do that. But what I can do is check it for power and ground. So this is the connector right here. And... They have the pin layout on there. Uh, the big pins are like, you know, a weird setup. But then you get to the smaller pins and then that's 5 through 11. And then that's 12 through 18. So what I'm looking for is pin 10 and 17. So 10, right before 11 there. That should be my battery power. So it's going to be this blue wire right here. And then uh, 17 is going to be right beside it on the other side. So that should be my ground, the black wire right there. So if I don't have battery power, um, I'm going to have to figure out how to get battery power. But also, if I'm not getting it on this side, I need to check it on this side and make sure it's even coming through this connector. There's a chance that it's not make, making a good connection in here. And then that's why I still got the connector. Where did I put it? Right here why I got this from the one at, the, at uh, Johnny's. And just in case, uh, for some reason, I'm not getting a connection through here. I already messed with the pins on it, uh, but you know, just in case there's a chance, I can just wire this in and then hook it up and hopefully get a good connection. Oh, also, if I'm getting both those signals there, I also got the diagram for the plug right into the module. So we can test there too to see if there's power on ground. Oh. 
So I'm only getting 0 0.2 volts, something like that, 0 0.02 volts, 0 0.03. I have a ground. I can test the ground. Well, I'll just leave that wire in there and take this one off and hook it up to the ground here. I'll put it on the uh, sound check for resistance. You'll hear it. Yeah, so we got a good ground, but I don't know for certain, but I would guess it would be 12 volts. I, it would be way, way more than what I'm getting anyways. So that could be our problem, whatever it is. Right. We might be able to start diagnosing this now. So I went and I got the whole schematic diagram of power distribution, and that shows all the fuse boxes and everything. See right there is the passenger presence detection module, and that goes up to fuse 64, and that's a 5 amp. So that's right here. What's it say on here? 64. AO system? 8 system? Whatever. I'd have never figured that out. Anyways, it is blown. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if we have any spares. All right. So now, 64. Make sure it don't pop. All right. It did not pop. So now, now we should be able to diagnose this. Actually, I should be able to connect to it now. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay. I can now read it. Electrical control unit hardware is current. Uh, presence more. Okay, let me see what we can do here. Electrical control unit hardware. Hmm. Let's clear trouble codes. Let's see live data. Oh, my airbag light went out. Let's start it. Hmm. Oh, it everything's plausible. Um, passenger airbag's disabled right now. Let me see if there's any trouble codes. There's none. <laughs> All right, kids. So here's the moral of the story: is check your fuses before you go out and buy a whole nother part to put in it. I still like for some reason I still feel like I'm gonna have a problem, but. I messed with all the pins on this connector to try to make tighten them up, thinking maybe there was something loose there. So I guess we can throw it back together now. <laughs> Let me shut this off. Let me get the passenger seat back in place. And when I sit down on it, it should turn the passenger airbag on. It's currently off. So let me get this seat sitting where it's supposed to be. I don't have to bolt it down. I just need to get it where it's supposed to be. And then we'll test that out. We're in place. Let's turn the power on. Make sure. Okay, our airbag light went out and it came back on. No, no, it's back on. Electrical control unit. So let's see what that is. Yeah, let's just try that other module. Let's try a whole other module. Let's just do it. All right, there's a very quick swap out. I already got it. And now I'm gonna hook the power up again and we're gonna see what's going on. All right, so now that I reconnected the battery, I got no codes right now, none. So let's see. All right, so maybe there's something faulty inside of this thing. Let's uh, let's go sit on the passenger seat and see if the senses senses me. So this was not a wasted trip. Look at that. Passenger airbag on. So it was in fact the module. Because now it works just fine. So 
I was gonna pay $65, I think it was, for a used one of these on eBay. 20 some bucks. And I got a whole seat. That's nasty. It's a nasty seat. It's just like your mom. Nasty. Alright, so I spent way too much time doing this. Uh, oh yeah, let's do one more thing today. I got a new door speaker. This door speaker's blown. And I bumped the jams and I pump it up. That thing don't pump it up. It sounds like crap. It's used on eBay. What is it with with like GM? What is it with cardboard speakers? This is Pioneer, okay? Why? Eh, I guess it isn't cardboard. It's fiber. I can see fiber in the back. Okay. It feels kind of like cardboard. I've seen worse from GM. But from the back, I can see like a mesh pattern. So it, it has to be some sort of fiber. Okay. All right. They're excused now. Let's rip this door panel apart and see what it looks like inside. I'm not going to do the engine repairs today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Okay, so looking at the speaker, it doesn't look blown, but I can tell you that it is. So first off, the cone is warped. Like I said, it looks like cardboard to me. Anyways, there's drag. That's one way to, if you push in on it and there's drag, you hear this. Now, if I push on this side, it doesn't drag. It's the cone, the sound cone. The sound cone, <laughs> real good depiction there. There's a magnet in there and there's a coil and that's what makes your speaker or your sub bump. It vibrates the cone from uh, magnetic waves and stuff. So anyways, they can come apart and then they drag on the inside and then they sound like crap. And that's what this one sounds like. So. Now, I should have uh, good tunes. So let me mess with the stereo a little bit. Just want to check and make sure. Yep, our airbag is still good. So it was the module. Um, and you, I didn't have to program it or nothing. Sounds pretty dang good now. That was our issue there. Two problems down. <laughs> lots, to, lots to go. <laughs> so I have brand new tires coming, so I'll be doing that. I got brakes all around. They gave me rear brakes, just the pads. Uh, they're drum brakes. The drums have a little bit of rust on them, so I'm going to clean them up, paint them. Fronts, I'm going to replace the rotors because they're warped a little bit. After you brake for a little bit, then they start to pulse. That brand new pads, since they're the, the rotors look like crap anyways, they're rusty and, and have uh, you know warpage and stuff like that. I'm just going to go th throw some brand new pads on this thing. Uh, so the guy that's getting it, you know, it'll be good for a while. New tires, new brakes, all that stuff. Then I got a manifold gasket. Let's go out and look at that, because I'm going to tell you, right now that's going to be fun. So I kind of feel like there's an exhaust leak underneath, and it almost feels like there's like I hear one when it's cold, and when it's cold, I definitely hear one up top, and when I hear it, it's over in here. So, but, yeah, it's over in here. Right there is where the exhaust goes out. And I was thinking, well, maybe it could possibly be down there. No, it's definitely up in this region. So I just got a brand new manifold gasket, and that's all we're doing is going to throw a new manifold gasket in. Um, then I got the aluminum housing, the thermostat housing. That's part of this. It's all this right here. If you're when you go to replace those, just go ahead and throw the aluminum one on. The aluminum one is going to fix your problem and it's not going to give you problems down the road like this one is but i can tell you from looking at this thing and i did have this heat shield off once it's going to be hard to get to the manifold bolts i'm probably going to take off this uh intake tube here 
The charge tube, I think I can leave on. I don't need, oh, it comes off the bottom. Yeah, it's all rubber. I can leave it on. Uh, the exhaust, I should be able to leave it on without loosening anything. I just need to get out far enough to get the new gasket in there. And, and hopefully we'll be all good. And then there's, there's an oil line. You smell antifreeze every time it runs and it burns off down there because it's running across the, the head from the thermostat housing there. And then running down this, the, the oil filter bracket, the, there's a cooler right there. It's running down over that. And that, when that gets hot, it, burns off the antifreeze and you can smell it so the same with the valve cover if if you're going to replace a valve cover go to zzp online and they sell an aluminum one buy the aluminum one here it is this cost me 21 bucks no lie full aluminum housing new bolts comes with a temperature sensor already in it this is plugged up top i think there's a different sensor that goes in the top of that maybe not Anyways, I can't remember. That plug might stay in there. Um, but there's a gasket already on it. And that's straightforward install. Three bolts and doing that. I got this exhaust manifold gasket. I'm going to be throwing that on. I like the stamp steel ones. You can get the fiber ones, but stamp steel just, to me, feels like a better uh, gasket. Anyways, brakes, rotors, all that stuff's in there. It's ready to go. I got to get this seat back in and get everything. Uh, come back to you tomorrow. I have a review to do. <laughs> Let's do that. So since I'm putting new tires on this thing, anyways, I don't really care if one gets a hole in it, whatever. I'm going to drain these completely. I'm going to take the stems out, drain these tires down because I have an air pump to review. This company was so confident in their air pump, the speed of it and uh, how it works and everything. They sent me another one. So they sent me a DeWalt air pump, brand new, with a battery, with a charger, to compete with this thing. So let me get everything out, and then I'll show you. If you're anything like me, and you have a portable air pump, and you hate that it takes forever to pump up tires, this is supposedly a solution for you. So, let's see these products. So, I've never used either one of these yet. I have not tested them. This one has a built-in battery that's rechargeable. This one takes regular 20 volt DeWalt batteries. Now they sent me a two amp hour battery for this thing for pumping stuff up. I'm gonna go a little bit farther. I have a three amp or three amp hour battery and it's fully charged. I'm gonna put this on it because they're so confident in this. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna set it to 34. Okay, actually, let's do 35. It's fully charged uh, mode. I see there's lots of different modes you can do. That's a bicycle tube. That's settings. Car tire, 35 PSI. It's already set to 35 PSI. Now, both of these can pump up inflatable devices like tubes and stuff they have these high capacity nozzles on them to do that they're both built in same with this one and it comes with different attachments for that too which is nice i don't know if you tried to ever blow up a inner tube by yourself it takes a lot of air that's when it's time to call your mom in <sighs> anyways it looks like our tires are ripe completely flat so i'm going to put the valves back in these things then we're going to hook both these pumps up i'm going to try to start them at the same time there's going to be a little bit of delay let's start the dewalt first just because they're so confident in their product 
we'll start the Dewalt first and we'll see how long it takes. I'm gonna try to start my phone timer at the same time and uh, and we'll I'll try to take a mental note of when the first one stops and then we'll stop it when the second one stops. I know we're not really project farm quality here. Uh, he's very thorough. I'm not. I'm going to be as thorough as I can, but we'll, we'll see how this happens. So the Vortex S6 took three minutes and 59 seconds to pump that up to 35 pounds. The Dewalt air compressor took five minutes and 11 seconds. Unacceptable. Now, just to make sure that this thing is not like kicking off early, that it's accurate, I brought a, I don't know how accurate this thing is. So this says it has 35.2 pounds in it now, so it went a little bit over. It slowed down and then eased into 35 and then shut off. That thing just ran full speed until it hit that, and it took an extra, the Dewalt, hold on a minute. I know it was over a minute more. The minute and 12 seconds more to pump that tire up, a whole nother minute. So that's pretty cool that this thing was that fast. This thing pumped up quick right off the bat. It was pretty impressive. 35 on the dot. So it was accurate. Let's go to the Dewalt. The Dewalt, it's showing 34.8. 34. .8. 34 it, it's accurate. So it was correct. It was pretty impressive for this thing. For me, I've never even heard of this brand before. Eaton Wolf. Eaton. Eaton Wolf. Anyways, the line for it is very nice. Like nice construction. It's a soft rubber. It fits really nice right inside the case. Somebody's flying a drone over my house right now. But it just clips right in. I ought to get my drone out and we'll have drone battles. I would say you ought to be able to do four tires with this thing, no problem. If it did one of them without, you know, skipping a beat. Ooh, ooh. It does have a work light built in here. It has a deflate and an inflate hose, like I said, for pumping up tubes and stuff like that. And it's very lightweight. It's honestly, it's lighter than the Dewalt. Impressive. Not to mention, this thing came with a nice carrying case. The Dewalt doesn't have a carrying case. But, uh, yeah, it gives you a quick, quick guide inside of here. And uh, a manual. I haven't looked at any of it, but there's also, uh, what is this, an app? Oh, for Amazon store. I thought there was an app for it. Yeah, not bad. They're just hovering over my house. They are way... Oh, they moved. Yeah, no, they're right there. I'm getting my drone out. I have it right now.
That was my neighbor. Well, there's a couple houses down down here. He called my cell phone. He's like, was that your drone? <laughs> yep, that was me. It's a neighborhood watch. I said I had to make sure that there wasn't any uh, intruders in the sky. So anyways, this is the Vortex S6 series. So if you want to get yourself one of these, link down in the description, discount code if they give me one. Hit those guys up. I do like it. Works pretty good. All right, so follow up to this review. As you can see, I have the Dewalt here because my wife got a raft off a TikTok shop or thing where she can lay in with water in it and drink mimosas or whatever. Anyways, so got this thing out here and uh, pumped up the pillow. That went fine. Then when I went to pump this up, it turned on. Now, this thing's still working. As you can see, it's still full battery. This is to blow up things. This is not to set a pressure. It must use a separate pump from the regular pump. Nothing. That pump worked to fill this up, then died a second into pumping that up. It still works. But I got to switch modes. So, like a car tire. It's not working this. This main thing here to pump up inner tubes and stuff. So, I'm not going to promote this. Instead, since he sent me this, this thing worked flawlessly. Of course, you would expect that because it's a Dewalt. So, I did email the company to tell them that their product was junk. So, we'll see how that response goes. <laughs> oh, another nice feature on this Dewalt that I just figured out myself. Open that up and it's got a long cord so that you can plug it into a cigarette outlet. Huh. That one doesn't do that. Nifty, huh? So anyways, I've been driving this thing. Honestly, it's not leaking coolant that bad. I haven't even had to add coolant in it. I've driven it all week and now I don't drive very far. But I've got an excellent gas mileage out of it. It actually rides really nice. It's comfortable. I still kind of like that fit a little bit better, but this is more, it rides better than the fit. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. Next video, gaskets and housings, maybe brakes, maybe tires. I don't know. We'll see what we get into. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom wants to come over and sit in my seat. This one, it's dirty. Dirty. And we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped. Hey, Stubie. Hi, I will pet you. No, it's you being. You eat. No. What? Yeah. I cannot find little Sully, but he does like to lay under our bed. <laughs> Sully, what are you doing? You don't want to come out and see the people? Huh? Okay, you just lay under here. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.